made it to another year, the first Sunday of 2024. We've had two baptisms. Come on, we got a reason to praise. So the devil is mad on today. Amen, amen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Hallelujah. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody say thank you, Lord. And his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen, amen. Just read Psalms 100. Somebody needs to give God some praise. Somebody needs to give God, tell God thank you this morning. Because somebody wished they could be here today. Somebody was hoping, Lord God, they'll make it this year. I'm 46 in the month of December. I know many people in my age who have died. So I'm thankful. So I'm going to come before his throne, telling him thank you, giving him worship and giving him the praise that only God deserves. Because he is my God. Come on now, somebody. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Facebook for watching this morning, for worshiping with us this morning. Thank you to Instagram, Twitter. Come on, Snapchat it all. Thank you, social media. Thank you for those who are coming in this church this morning. For those who are walking in on their way, I'm thankful to see your faces on today. Amen. Amen. Now we will have our deacons to come up. Amen. To give prayer and scripture. Amen. Amen. And please remain standing for the for the reading of the word. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to everyone. I would like to call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with 23rd verse. I have received of the Lord which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, who shall ever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together until condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. But the Lord has a blessing for the reader and the hearers and the doers of his word this morning. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year to you all. At this time, let us bow our heads and lift up our hearts in prayer, giving reverence to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this Sunday morning, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this first Sunday of the year 2024, Lord. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to be here in the house of worship, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You woke us up this morning, Lord. You touched our hearts, Lord. You put on our minds. You gave us the strength, the ability to get up out of bed, Lord, to feed ourselves, Heavenly Father, to close ourselves, dear Lord, to be able to have transportation provided. To Once again, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lift up your hands, all ye gates, ye everlasting doors, for who is the king, the king of glory? 
who is God Almighty. Lord, we're going to praise your name. We're going to lift up your name. We're going to give honor to your name. We're going to glorify your name, Lord. But this is the praise opportunity, Lord. This is a thankful opportunity, Lord. For it was you who gave us this day, Lord. It was you who allowed us this opportunity. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for these candidates for baptism, Heavenly Father. For we opened up the new year with a new blessing, Heavenly Father. For you have provided, Lord. Once again, we see growth, Heavenly Father. We see young ones, Heavenly Father, giving their lives to you, Lord. Truly, that's a blessing, Lord. Truly, we ought to be rejoicing this day, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this first Sunday, this communion Sunday, Lord, that we will break bread, Heavenly Father, that we would have this opportunity to be able to remember your son, Lord. Every opportunity, this is a blessing, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you. Thank you. For you are worthy to be praised. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Father God, touch the hearts of all those that are here, Lord. Father, strengthen those that have lost a loved one this first week of the new years. Father, touch them in a special way, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for crossing over from 2023 to 2024. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. For I just love you with all my heart, Heavenly Father. And we ought to love you with all our hearts, Heavenly Father. Truly, Father, you are worthy of to be praised, Lord. You are worthy. You give us all these opportunities, Lord. And I truly pray that we do not take these things that you have given us for granted. That every opportunity we should lift up your name, whether it's in this sanctuary, out in the community, wherever we go, Heavenly Father, I just pray that we would give you the praise that you deserve. Thank you. This is a day of thanksgiving, Lord. And we want to just thank you and give reverence to your name, Heavenly Father, for we will not be ones that will not shout, for no rock is going to cry out in my place, Heavenly Father. For I have so much to be grateful for. I need not a rock, Lord, but you are the rock, Lord. You gave me life. You've given us life, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father God, bless our pastor as he come forth with the word, Heavenly Father. Father, for this new year, I just pray that we would open our minds even more into your word. I pray that we would study your word and allow your Holy Spirit to intercede in our life, Lord. For you're not, we're not alone in this world. Your spirit is in us, Heavenly Father. I just pray that we will allow your spirit to use us as he sees fit, Heavenly Father. And Father God, again, at this new year, and thank you for this Sunday morning, Lord. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, our Lord and Savior, our everlasting Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Lord, he is all in all, Lord. He's the Messiah, Heavenly Father. <laughs> Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord and good morning, new revelation and happy new year. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet and bless the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give God the glory. The Bible tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And let us be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. So somebody send up Judah today. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and worship the Lord. I see you coming in and I see people praising. Come on, lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is great. Hallelujah. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a congregational song that we all know this morning, okay? Hallelujah. 
Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. Lift your voice, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Right here. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. We're going to sing it again together. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. Lift your voice, everybody. Lift your voice, everybody. Right here. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, put your hands together right here. Hey, everybody clap your hands. Yeah. Let's say this. Say, God is a good God. Yeah. God is a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Oh, God is a holy God. God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. God is a righteous God. God is a good 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 God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Have your child. So you know him. So you love him. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He saved my soul, made me whole. He delivered me. Yes, she. Somebody ought to make some noise. Anybody that know that he is? Oh, yes, she. Yes, she. He's a lover of my soul. He's the one that made me whole. He delivered me, saved me, freed me. Oh, yeah, see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, see. Yeah, see. Anybody love the Lord this morning? Are you grateful today? It's the first Sunday in the new year and you're still here. Somebody give God the glory. Hey. We'll say this. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Hey, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. 
I gotta hear him say it. I gotta hear him say it. Well, well done. Morning, New Revelation. Good morning. And um, do we have any visitors this morning? Any? If you can stand, will you stand? Hey, hey. Thank you for standing. Oh, okay. We have two visitors. Wonderful, wonderful. We're three. Yay! We have three visitors. Four. Okay. Five, six. Yay! Any college students still here? None, okay. Anybody visiting from out of town that used to go to the Revelation, came back to say hello to family and friends? Linda? <laughs> okay, well on behalf of the pastor, Brother Stuff. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Well, we thank you. We thank you. And on behalf of the pastor, the choir, the members, we're glad to have you. The visitors let us know that those of us who are members are spreading the word and that they're inviting people to come. So we're glad that you're here. This is the first of the year, a new beginning, a new start. So hopefully... Um, something will be said or heard or you've already heard enough to say, you know, I want to make this year count. I want to be the best that I can be. I want to glorify God in all that I do and in all that I say. So we welcome you. We encourage you. We hope you're motivated to make 2024 a wonderful time in the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's stand to our feet as we go forth in our congregational hymn. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled. Time is filled with swift trance. Oh, no. You gotta build your hopes big. And you've got to hold Here we go. Everybody ought to hold God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, and you've got to everybody on a hold. That feels good. Let's stay right there. Clap your hands. Everybody on a hold. Oh, to his hand. You gotta feel. Everybody on a hole. I think we'll do one more round. Everybody on a hole. You are the hope. Everybody ought to hope to God's son change. Hey.
Amen. We all need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because without a shadow of a doubt, there's no other hand we would rather hold that won't change. Now we're going to prepare our hearts and come to the altar and thank God and praise God and lift him up for all the wonderful things that he's done for us. Thanking God for another year. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Thank you, Lord. Bless us, Father. Keep us, Father. You may come to the altar. Or you may sit in your seats and you don't feel like walking. couldn't praise you enough. We are thankful, Father, for you blessing us to make it in the door of 2024. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the things in the past, but we thank you, Father, what you're about to do, Lord Jesus, because we know that you're able, Father, to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask to think for, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for giving us another chance to be better. I just want to be better. I want to love better. I want to forgive better. I want to share better. I want to be more given in my church offering, Lord Jesus. More understanding in the word of God as our pastor bring it to us, Father. And as we read the word at home ourselves, so we can know, Lord Jesus, when we're hearing what's right or what's wrong. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our little kids, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the children that came this morning, Lord Jesus, to accept you as their Lord and their Savior and be baptized, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving us the patience to wait on them, Lord, like you have waited on us. Thank you for that child, Lord Jesus. Thank you for both of the children, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for everything that you're doing for us, Lord Jesus. Father, bless the sick and the shed in, Lord Jesus. Bless those that fortunate that we are, Lord Jesus. Bless us to help them and acknowledge them, Lord Jesus. And bless it, Father, for us to lift you up so that they can be drawn by you unto you, Lord Jesus. Please, Heavenly Father, I just thank Father, I'm just happy. I'm so happy, Lord Jesus, because I made it to our church. I made it to hear a word from the Lord as our pastor bring it, Lord Jesus. You didn't have to let us make it. Somebody wanted to be here, Lord Jesus, and they're gone on home, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us love in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Let us not fake it. Let us, let us really mean it, Lord Jesus. Let us pick each other up when we fall down, when we fall short before your glory, Lord Jesus. Please, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord Jesus. All of these blessings, Father, we pour upon our congregation. And we are thanking you, Lord Jesus. Bless our pastors. He bring the word, Lord Jesus. Because we know he's going to bring it, Lord, the way that you gave it to him. Father, thank you for everybody. Thank you for our elderly, Lord Jesus. I don't want to forget them. I love them so much, Lord Jesus. Father, bless them, Lord Jesus. And bless us to share and care with them as well. Father, we ask it all of these blessings in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Just who
Come on, you ought to put your hands together. Let's go. Glory. That was too fast. Maybe you know this one. Glory, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me hear the church say, since, since I burn us down. Glory, glory.
got to go, but I got one last verse that says, I'm going home to. What you going to do? Since I lay my burdens down, I'm going home to. Since I.
The word of the Lord declares that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Let me see your hands if God has changed you. I may not be what I want to be. I may not be what I ought to be. But he's brought me from a mighty long way. Created me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Say a one. Has come over me, yeah. your neighbor and say, neighbor, I may not be what you want me to be, but when I look back over my life, I'm glad I'm not what I got used to be, amen, because a change has come over me, hallelujah, things I used to do, some of them I don't do no more, then some of them I don't do as much no more. Because there's a change over me. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for <clears throat> reminding us, amen, by way of these musicians and these voices that we got to lay our burdens down. And if we lay our burdens down, we will experience a change. Because how many of you know you've been carrying the load too long now you've been carrying it he said cast all your cares upon me for I care for you and he said the load will be lightened you'll experience change if you just trust me amen give these musicians and singers another hand amen thank God Thank God for minister and training, Alandra. Amen. Also, Dr. Joe Nay, amen, for sharing with us on today, these deacons and all of you who have participated thus far in the worship. Y'all look different. Maybe it's because I got on these glasses. <laughs> amen. It's so good to be 
able to see. Amen. To see out and to see down. Well, God is good. We just, we talk about change, right? Change happens in life, and so we honor God for change. And that's one thing in life you got to accept it. And we honor God for change. I don't want to belabor the time, but this is the first Sunday of another year in Kronos, man's time. But according to Kairos, God's time, we are grateful to be in time. And I'm grateful for God's time. And oftentimes we get excited, as I stated last year, about a new year. But then we carry some old stuff from the previous year. Some of you have been carrying that load since the turn of the century. You've been holding some stuff for years and years. I believe the Lord is trying to give us a message on today that if you keep doing things the same way and expecting a different result, you need some help. Because it's been said that that's insanity. If you keep on doing things the same old way and you're expecting a different result, then we need some help. Amen. But I believe that as we yield ourselves, you, you're here today for a reason. You didn't show up just because you wanted to, I hope. But you hope you showed up expecting to receive something that will give you some direction, maybe some correction another perspective about life and as i was meditating this week this scripture laid upon my heart i believe the lord has a word for us on today matthew 7 from the niv version of the bible it'll come on the screen for those who have their own copy of God's executive order. It says like this in verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down. The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on a rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and do not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down. The streams rose. The winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When he had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. Amen. I want to share from this thought on today, building on a standing on a solid foundation standing on a solid foundation as this particular passage began to resonate in my heart i began to think deacon robinson that this is a good start off message for all of us because all of us that are in here we are either building on a foundation or we're establishing a foundation and if we are going to really guess what make it through this year we're going to have to learn how to stand and it's not just about standing but it's about what are you standing on amen somebody and so we have to learn that this year because I, I can't promise you, I wish I was like some of the other prophet liar preach. I'm, not, I'm some of the other preachers that will tell you that this is your year, that you won't have to go through anything, that you won't have to face any hardships, any hard trials in your life, that depression might creep up on you. 
people in your family, loved ones may die. People might lie. I can't tell you that this is going to be an easy year. Amen. Is there anybody other than me that's lived long enough that no life don't go the way you want it to go? Life don't go the way you plan it to go. But you just have to learn to deal with life. So it's not about what you are going through. Y'all roll with me. It's about what you are standing on. So the Bible have, has us to know in this message on today, you have to ask yourself a question. Because in life, all of us are standing on something. But I'm talking about standing on a solid foundation. What type of foundation are you standing on? I, I, I see some people in here. If I really would poll the house, I see some people that have stood the test of time. I see some people that are standing right now. I, I see Brother Brian a couple of months ago. He was fearful about facing the storm in his life. But guess what, y'all? He's still standing. Is there anybody in the house that ever been through something? But thank God that you were standing on the right foundation. That's the only reason that you see me in my right mind. That's the only reason you see me not in jail. Because if I was not standing on the right foundation, I might have killed somebody. I might have. I wish I would have some honest people in the house. I know your life been all good. Amen. You done everything right. But I want some real people in the house that can testify, that can witness to the fact. It's not about me just standing. It's about what I'm standing on. Because the Bible teaches us in Ephesians, go home and read it, chapter 6, verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able, watch this, to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, you're going to have to learn how to stand. I wish I had some people that can real, really rely on Donnie McClurkin's song that said, after you've done all you can, you just have to learn how to stand. Even when you want to fold up, even when you want to go home, pull the covers over your neck because trouble, heartache, and pain is on your life. I've learned not to let depression, frustration stop me from being all that God has called me to be. Stand, I don't care how young or old you are. You're going to have to learn how to stand. And if you're going to stand, you ought to stand on a solid foundation. I don't know where you are. Either you are building on the foundation or you are establishing a foundation. Amen. And so as I look at this passage, this is Jesus' sermon on the mount, you all. If you go back home to chapter 5, you'll see Jesus, he, he took some disciples up on the mountain and he began to teach them. A disciple, you all, is a learner. Somebody say learner. A disciple is a student. We have to learn, watch this, if we're going to stand, have to be a student. You're going to have to learn how to listen to somebody. Amen. Somebody, you, you're going to have to learn how to listen to people. Listen to everybody. Because then you can decipher what's true. Amen. Some of us just want to listen to certain people that tell us what we want to hear. But I, I, I know all y'all was watching Cat Williams. Uh, I watched some Cat Williams. Y'all, y'all don't. I know y'all say folk don't maybe not heard about it, but I watched that whole two hours of that interview that he had. And one part of the show is said he said yes. I, he grew up Jehovah Witness. Then he had some dealings with the, uh, uh, the the Muslim Farrakhan. Then he said, I went to the Jewish mosque. He said, I went to the Baptist church. He said, I went to the Pentecostal church. He said, because I didn't just want to read about it. He said, I wanted to experience it for myself. And the only thing I'm trying to tell somebody in the house, you may not be able to handle it, but, but there are some things that you need to experience for yourself. There are some things that you need to hear for yourself self so you can decipher what is true for you. I wish somebody in the house understand. You have to listen to some things. You have to learn how to be a student. So he took the disciples up on the mountain and being a student for Christ is not for everybody. Now, if it ain't for you, it ain't for you. Amen. You can choose whatever you want to choose. I remember, Sister Mitchell, I was young and preaching, and I wanted everybody to believe in my Jesus. 
I would get upset, Sister Hill, if they didn't believe in my Jesus. But I learned, Brother Roosevelt Glenn, it's all right. You believe what you believe, and I'm going to still love you. But guess what? I'm going to believe in my Jesus because the Jesus that I serve, if it was good enough for Big Mama, Granddaddy, Mama, is shown up good enough. Now, that's just me. Amen. But he took his disciples, the, these people. Maybe they were curious. I don't know. Maybe they just want to hear, just like I said. Let me see what this man uh, from Galilee is talking about. People all around listening to him. And he was trying to help shape their attitude, their mentality about being a part of the kingdom of God. All of our minds need to be shaped. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Not only does our mind need to be shaped, but our minds have to be shifted. Amen. Some, because the, the Bible, uh, it, it helps shift your mind from the ways of the world and to the ways of the word. Because in life, we need to shift our mindset. Amen. I'm getting there. Jesus was trying to shift their way of thinking. So he goes on and starts talking to them. Go home and read it. You read it in the fifth chapter. If you haven't, read the fifth chapter all the way through the seventh chapter. He's talking about the be attitudes, if you will, how your attitude should be. Amen. As it relates to being a part of the kingdom all the way, he teaches them and he gets right here in chapter seven back to then you all. They didn't have any chapters, but for our understanding and grammatics and reading, we have chapters in the Bible. But this was a whole sermon and he is about to bring his sermon to a close. He goes on to teach all of them about how they should be as a member of the kingdom. Everyone everywhere and everything that we associate ourselves with there is a attitude that you must have amen somebody when i worked at us steel i had to have a certain attitude sometimes i just like to cuss amen <laughs> because i was at the steel i wish i had some real folk in the house See, sometimes you shift to where your attitude is. It just gave me a little more permission to do what I like to do. Every place, everywhere you work has a certain attitude and an identity that you must take on. Now, you don't have to take it on, but Jesus was shifting their attitude and he's closing it. He's bringing his sermon to a close. But, but because, let me put this in here for the deep saints. I said when I was at the meal, uh, I used to like the cuss. But remember, I said, Brother McDay, I said some of those things I don't do as much no more. So I don't cuss as much as I did when I was. I wish I had some real folk because there was a shifting in my mind. And when your mind shifts, there ought to be a change. Amen. And so he was trying to help them shift in their mind and as he's bringing this sermon to a close he gives some noteworthy things that i think will help us as we go throughout this year if we're going to be able to stand through 2024 he says right there in verse number 24 i, I love this uh he says therefore he's bringing it to a close after he's talking about all of those who call on my name he said y'all not gonna be there I know you sat in church all this time. I know you sang in the choir and you're going to say, I did all this. I preached the word and you know, he's going to be like, I don't know you. Have you ever had somebody to come up to you and say, oh, I know you. And they be like, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't know me. I ain't it. Amen. There's an old blues song that said it sure wasn't me. Some of y'all to get there when you get home. Amen. You don't know who I am. He said, I don't know you. But then he says, as he's closing it, he said, then when I would tell them plainly in verse 23, I told you, he said, I never knew you away from me, you workers of iniquity. Then he says, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and there's a conjunction, puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. He gives an analogy. And the first thing you need if you're going to stand, this is just some notes for the year, you're going to have to have some worthy words. I hope somebody get that. See, 
I told you, you got to have worthy because all words aren't worthy. You got to be careful what you listen to. Not just listen to, you got to be careful what you accept. You got to be careful what you take in. In this life, you're going to have to have some reliable words. That's why Jesus, Deacon Alexander, says, if anyone hears these words of mine, because Jesus, Sister Susie Wilson, he's a part of the Trinity, and he represented his daddy. And he said, my daddy said that I'm not a man that I should lie, or the son of man that should. If So therefore, he said, if my daddy don't lie, then I don't lie, because me and the father are one. You have to learn how to trust some worthy words. I hope you trust. The, I hope you count the word of God as worthy. I hope those of us who are part of the church, I just believe the word of God to be true. Amen, somebody. I, I, I just believe, I don't know what you believe is true. Yes, my grandmama, granddaddy, all aunties, mama, daddy, they said some things that will stick with me. Amen. But I need some worthy words in my life. We have to learn how to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways do what? Acknowledge him, and he shall direct our paths. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need some worthy words. Amen. I, I need some words that will 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 help lift me up in the time of sorrow. I, I need some words like Psalms 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. What? When people are hating on me, I, I need some worthy words like Psalms 37 that said, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon will be. When I feel like I'm suffering lack, I need some words, the words in my life that said, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches. I need some worthy words that say, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord are called and according to his purpose. I need some worthy words in my life. Not only the, the reason I need worthy words, I won't be too long, y'all. The reason I need these worthy words, because then I will become weatherproof. Y'all roll with me. Amen. He says, if you hear these words of mine, you're going to be like a wise man who built his house on a rock, a solid foundation. The worthy words are your foundation in which you are standing on. He's saying, because one day, I don't know, Brother Ronnie, we're just what, this is the seventh day in this year? We got about how many? My math ain't good. We got a lot more to go. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what day is going to come. But I declare the storm is going to come. Some rain is going to fall. The streams are going to rise. Look at what it says about the man who built his house on the rock. He said the storms came. The rain fall, the, 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 the streams came. It said, and it beat into the house. It beat into the house. It beat into the house. But when you are on some worthy words, when you are on a solid foundation, guess what? Tears may come out of your eyes. Things may beat you on this side and things may beat you on that side of bad doctor's report. You may get diagnosed with a disease. Your family and friends and loved ones may leave here. But guess what? It may beat into me. It beat into me. But tell your neighbor, I'm weatherproof. Guess what? Weatherproof means that you are resistant. I wish somebody in the house could understand. That means that you are resistant to the effects of the bad weather. Oh, 
hallelujah in the house. I, I wish somebody could get excited right there because you can look back over your life, Tanya, and you know how you've been weatherproof. There's been some storms in your life. The winds blow. The hell came down. But I'm so glad, amen, somebody, that I'm weatherproof because after all I've been through, I still have my joy. I'm still standing. I'm glad that I'm weatherproof gonna beat into you beat into you we'll try to break you but because I'm on a solid foundation I might get some dents in me I, I might get some cracks in me but guess what I I'm not gonna fall I, I might have anybody got some dents in your life anybody got some cracks in you but thank God even with all the cracks tell your neighbor I'm still together so Y'all need to get excited in the house. I got some cracks in my life. I got some dents in me. But guess what? I'm still together. I know everybody can't testify because some of y'all cracked up. That's why I'm looking at y'all. Cracked up in your mind. Cracked up in your body. But is there anybody in the house that's cracked up? But you know, I'm still holding it together. I still got it together. I'm still standing. I'm weatherproof. Amen. I feel like shouting. Because I'm testifying, Brother Thurman, when I look, Brother Glenn, over my life, I'm seeing how things have beaten to me. People that I thought were on my side, but they were talking behind my back. People that I thought that loved me didn't love me at all. They just loved me for what they can get. But I'm glad that I weathered the storm. Slap your neighbor high five and say, I weathered the storm. Oh, because I had some worthy words. He said, but then I'm on the rock. He said, but anyone who hears these words, that's the caveat. You got to put it into practice. The Bible says in James that don't just be a hearer of the word, but you got to do it. Amen, somebody. I was listening to Desmond's the KG this morning. I, I was uh, sometime he was talking about Pat Riley. He said Pat Riley and Paul Pierce. They were saying uh, uh, Pat Riley tried to make you work out so hard until you threw up. Because if you quit, then he was going to cut you. I wish somebody missed what I'm saying. There are times in life where some situations will make you throw up. I wish I had some people that play sports in the house. There was some time on the track team, Brother Chuck, I ran, and I had to get over there to the side because I was running so hard, and I had to throw up. But guess what? Just because I threw up didn't mean I was going to give up. And is there anybody in the house that you had to throw up some stuff, but you were not going to quit? You were not going to give up because I had some worthy words, and I know who I was. So I got to put it into practice. He said, but if you don't, he said, then you're going to be like a foolish man. I'm almost done. Amen. And Big Mama used to always say, there's nothing worse than an old fool. I didn't want to be a young one. Amen. And surely as I'm getting a little older, I sure don't want to be an old fool. So when the Bible says that if you're going to be like this if you're going to be like the one that don't heed these words you're going to be foolish because he built his house on the sand both of them had a foundation one was solid but Bernie if you build your house on the sand when the storm comes look at what it says I'm just about through same thing happened the winds blew streams rose it beat into the house, but because it was on something that was not solid or stable, the structure was not stable. Hallelujah in the house, somebody. If you build on something that is unstable, then you're going to be unstable. That's why we have a whole lot of people. I, I know some of us, and I, I'm not making fun of it, but some of us need psychological help. We need spiritual help. 
But we also need to couple it with psychological help because we're unstable. We've been through some traumatic things in our life. And that's what's wrong with some of us in the African-American community. We act like we don't need no help because we don't want to tell nobody. But all of us need some help. God just ain't going to do it. Some other people have been watched as bona fide to help bless us in order for us to be better in our life. He said we are going to be unstable if we build on something that's unstable. You all, you can't build on no sand and expect it to stand in the midst of a storm. Lord have mercy because what it is brother Mike uh, uh, the house then if it's on something unstable is weak and wobbly Lord have mercy some of us are just weak and wobbly yes we got some dents in us that's why we fell over here we got some dents in us we got some cracks in it tore us all the way up from the flow up and there are some of us in here we think this because it's a new year that we're going to be put back together just because we're in a new year but baby you need to establish a, a firm a solid foundation so you cannot only be waterproof, weatherproof, but you can be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak and wobbly. I'm, some of us, you can tell the way we walk. I know you got that bad knee. I ain't talking about that. Amen. You got that bad back. You're getting weak and wobbly. Today, somebody too was there. Vicky, you asked me today downstairs. She said, why are you walking like that? I said, my knee hurt. Amen. Life will make you weak and wobbly, but I'm going to stand in my spirit. I'm going to stand if I can't stand in my body. I'm going to stand in my soul. I'm going to stand in, I don't want to be weak and wobbly. Especially at this stage in my life. I, I've been through a whole lot in my life. I've been through some stuff. Don't discount what people have been through. You don't know what the person sitting next to you. They may not be as old as you, but they done been through something. Amen. And guess what? It took them a whole lot to get to where they are right now. And so therefore, I'm glad. I ain't going to settle for less. Can't do it. But I'm done, I, and, and I need to make this point. If you're going to stand on a solid foundation, you need worthy words. You'll be weatherproof. But if you don't stand on it and practice it, you will be weak and wobbly. But then I'm going to this last point, and the Lord gave this to me as a bonus because I was going to stop right there. But as I kept on thinking and my mind kept going, when I got to verse 28, I, I saw this as significant. It said, when Jesus had finished saying these things, watch this, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. And I said, oh, Lord, that, that kept on messing with me, Sister Mitchell. Then it finally hit me. I said, oh, I see it. That person then will be a worshiper. Come in, Deacon McGee. Amen. Let me help. Because it said when the people had finished seeing it, he said the crowds were amazed. Sometimes we're amazed when we see some things. We feel good when we hear a preacher preach. Amen. It feels good, but it's just not enough. Watch this. To acknowledge him as having authority. Y'all missing what I'm saying. It's not enough to just acknowledge him as having authority. But you got to accept him. Somebody missing what I'm saying. As having authority. A lot of people will sit around and say, oh, yes. Some of y'all will be like Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, oh, we know that you are one that has come from God in John chapter 3. He said, because the stuff you're doing, nobody could do them except they be from God. But Jesus, Shahid, told him. He said, I ain't worried about you being amazed at what I'm doing. He said, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, you must be born again. 
He said there has to be a shifting in your mind. There has to be a shifting in your soul. Don't just sit back and be in wonder about what I'm doing. But is there anybody know that he's not just a wonder in my eyes, but he's a wonder in my soul. That's why they sang that song. Oh, what a change that has come over me is because I'm standing on a sure foundation that all Oh, him said it like this on oh, Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand I dare not trust the sweetest train but I'm wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand I didn't got happy now y'all all because I remember that I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shores very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe now safe am I it was love that lifted me and now I'm standing on a solid rock look at your neighbor say neighbor are you a worshiper cause a worshiper it acknowledges and it accepts it falls under the authority of the one that's worthy of the worship and I don't know about you but 2024 the stones may rise the winds may blow but I'm so glad that I'm standing on a sure foundation I'm so glad that I'm weatherproof look at your neighbor say oh neighbor oh neighbor I'm so glad that I can make it through the night I can make it through the storm say yes all oh, because my hope is in Jesus ain't he all right say yes I'm through now y'all but I'm reminded of a time when I was watching channel 9 news I'm reminded of a time when the woman on the news she was talking about a hailstorm a hailstorm came that night and Tanya the woman said to the news reporter the hell was so bad that it cracked it busted out my back window but my baby was in the back seat she said and the hell began to come through the back window she said I thought about it I need to save my baby she said so what I did I got in the back seat and I covered she said, I covered my baby. I didn't want to hell to hit my baby. So I'll take all the hell for my baby. The woman said, look at my back. Look at the bruises from the hell. All I was trying to do was save my baby. But I'm so glad over 2,000 years ago, the Lord looked from time. He said, look at my babies they down there and all the hell is trying to destroy them but I'll go down and I'll cover them is there anybody in the house glad that Jesus he covered me he died didn't he die on a hill called Calvary yes he died yes he did he saved me from the hell Ain't he all right? Oh, yeah. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saving me 
from the hell. He took the nails in his hand. He took the spear in his side. I don't know about you, but I'm going all the way with Jesus. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to keep on standing on his promises. Look at your neighbor. I'm through now, y'all. Say, neighbor, keep on standing on his promises. He made another promise. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. Because God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Because one of these days, he's coming back. Ain't he all right? Oh, 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 yeah. Ain't he all right? Oh, oh, yeah. He's coming back for me, and I'm ready. Whenever he comes, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Say, yeah. I want to hear him say, you stood the test of time. Now come on up a little bit higher. Well done. Well done. Well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up a little bit higher. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to hear in our he ears a word that can sustain us through this 2024 season. Thank you, oh God, that we have a worthy words from you. That word will help us to be weatherproof. Father, we don't want to be weak and wobbly, but we want to trust in your word and practice it. And Father, then we want to be a worshiper because you said you're looking for true worshipers, not choir members, not praise singers, not deacons, not preachers, not ushers, but you have said you're looking for true worshipers, those who will fall under my authority. And Father, we pray that a spirit of openness will enter into the minds and hearts of your people, that they will be open to Bible study, that they be open to Sunday Bible Institute. They'll be open to opening their word and reading it. They'll be open so that they can stand firm this year, no matter what comes their way. Father, we ask that you touch right now those who need a shift in their life, in their mind. Father, we pray that this word will help them to make a decision to stand on your promises. And those of us who are witnesses who have stood on your promises, we pray that our life is a testimony to them that said only what you do for Christ will last. Father, we ask that they open their hearts and their minds to you. And as we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, They'll come running saying, what must I do to be saved? Or they may want to get reconnected or they may want to be a part of this local assembly. We pray this prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Thank God for those of you who tuned in by way of Facebook. Those who will watch us on our YouTube channel. I pray something was said to inspire you, to motivate you, to challenge you that this year you're going to need to stand. And you're going to need a worthy word. You're going to need to be weatherproof. You don't want to be weak and wobbly this year. But you need to be a worshiper. If you want to be a disciple, a member of this church, we pray that you Facebook us, email us, write us a letter. Come in person. Thank you for those who consider us your Facebook church. Those who are sick. Those who are convalescing. Those who are bereaved. We praying for you. And we want you to know we love you. And may God bless you and keep you is our prayer and remember don't let the day make the difference in you but you make the difference in the day put your hands together in the place let us stand on our feet good afternoon i am your news anchor lynn clark and here is the nrnbc news for the week. This first Sunday of 2024. And if you haven't heard it quite enough, Happy New Year. The NRMBC Learning Center tutoring program is currently taking applications for any interested youth from grades 1 through 12 for the upcoming school semester. 
there is a sign up sheet in the vestibule. If you have any questions, please see John Holloway, Connie Wilson, or Dr. Antoinette Cardina. Will all ministry leaders submit your 2024 calendar date to Pat Cook or Kwanjalyn Norman? Or you can email them to the church at newrevelationmbchurch at aol.com. Thanks, Carmelita Thrash. We are currently on break from Bible study, but are reading The Gift of Forgiveness by Charles Stanley over the break. Please, if you already ordered the book or wish to obtain a copy of the book, the cost is $11. If you have any announcements for the NRMBC News Team, please submit them to Felicia McGee no later than Thursday of every week. And at this time, we would like to recognize those members who are celebrating a birthday this week. The New Revelation Church family would like to wish happy birthday to Adrian King. May you have a wonderful time celebrating on your special day. If your birthday or anniversary is in the month of January and you would like to be recognized, please see Brenda English. New Revelation, let us continue to pray and offer our support to the sick and shut in and their caregivers, the youth, the bereaved, and those in prison. This concludes the NRMBC News for the week. If you are watching and would like to contact or visit New Revelation, we are located at 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana. The phone number is 219-949-2225. We would love to have you join us on Sunday. Our Sunday Bible Institute starts at 9.30 a.m., and worship service is at 11 o'clock a.m. May you all have a wonderful and safe week. And remember, don't let the day make the difference in you. You make the difference in the day. Thanks for watching the NRNBC News. I'm Lynn. Take care, and we will see you next time.